Hey, what's the crack and welcome to or back to the channel. Today's episode is the final installment of a series where I introduce you to a good starting workflow for working with multicam clips in DaVinci Resolve. In the first episode, we covered how to create a multicam clip that will sync all of your footage for you, as well as some basic bits of quality control you should do before moving into part two, which is where we covered how to edit and change the camera angle of your multicam clip. Now, if you want to check out either of those episodes, I have cards above and links below in the description. In today's episode, I'm gonna be showing you how to finish off the audio and visual sides of your multicam clip. So on the video side, we're covering color correction and color grading. And on the audio side, we're gonna cover the audio mix. Just to be crystal clear, this is not a color grading or audio mixing tutorial. Rather, we're covering the broad concepts of applying techniques in those two respective fields to a multicam clip as it can behave slightly differently. With that all out of the way, let's jump into the software and start learning. The broad stroke concept of the workflow I'm going to be showing you today is that on the video track of your multicam clip, you're typically going to want to go into the multicam clip and work on the original clips when applying your color correction and color grading. Whereas on the audio side of things, typically you're going to want to stay out of the multicam clip and work within your main timeline. Now this is a general workflow that will work in most situations, but it is not a one workflow fits all and there are going to be exceptions. So keep that in mind. Starting first with the visual side of the multicam clip, there is a key concept to keep in mind here. And that is that with exception for things like blending modes, cross dissolve, and say split screens, typically we can only see one visual on our screen at a time. That'll make more sense later on when I do the audio equivalent of this concept, but for now, just keep that in mind. So let's start putting this into some context. First, I'm gonna right click on my multicam clip and open it in timeline. And now I have access to the three original clips. So I'm gonna start by talking about the digital negative of these three clips. We have three different cameras, each with three different sensors from two different manufacturers. There's two different color sciences being used here and two of the cameras with their low bit rate, I opted to use ETTR techniques. So exposing to the right, so right there is a whole host of reasons as to why we need to be able to get in to the multicam clip and access the original clips so we can grade them independently. So for example, if I take the grade from my A camera and apply that to my B camera, the FS5 that was exposed to the right. And first I'll just change this Cinematch third party plugin equivalent of a color space transform to have the correct input. Even still, these are totally different. So you can see that when I apply the actual grade, I had to pull down the exposure. There's differences in saturation. I had to address the highlights of the skin to look more natural. I also had to address the hue and the saturation of the skin. There's a whole bunch of things I had to do separately on this clip to get it to match the A camera clip. Now, like I said, there's not a color grading tutorial, but I just wanted to point out a really obvious visual reason as to why I need to get into the multicam clip and access the original clips on the color side of things. Before we jump into the audio side of things, I wanted to cover three last really important points. The first two are in relation to someone who is working with footage that was shot on identical cameras and identical settings. You see, there's a big difference between a camera being matched on paper and a camera being matched as the eye perceives it. When you change camera angles, for example, if you clock a camera further around your subject, the skin tones tend to get a lot more glary and this results in kind of hot spots and washing out of saturation. Another really common example of needing to have independent grades on each angle will be the use of power windows to establish vignetting. If you have a different camera angle, your subject is either gonna be in a different position of the frame or at least be a different size within that frame, often both, which will require a unique power window per camera angle. And finally, the biggest benefit I see of using a multicam clip and doing the grade to do the independent clips is for when you need to update or change or modify that grade 
You see, in today's example, we don't see the full benefit of this because we only end up with about nine clips from that main multicam clip. Imagine this was a feature length documentary and you end up with a hundred odd clips from this interview. You've now got a massive color grading challenge ahead of you. In this context, the most efficient thing to do is utilizing the multicam clip by going in there and updating one grade per angle and coming back out, that updates percolates throughout the entire main timeline and you're laughing and ready to move on. Okay, that's enough of that. Now let's jump back into the software and start covering the audio side of things. We already established that on the visual side of things, we can typically only see one visual at a time. Well, it's kind of the opposite on the audio side of things. You see, we can hear multiple audio tracks at the same time. So typically I find it's better to stay out of the multicam clip and work in your main timeline. If you're working with a multicam scenario where you have three different people say mic'd up, there's three different voices that you need to address separately. I'll talk about a workflow that suits that scenario a little bit later on, but for now let's stick with this scenario of a single vocal channel. So why do I want to stay in the main timeline when mixing my audio and performing any audio effects? So let's have a look at this timeline. I have a vocal track that goes pretty much throughout the entire duration of the timeline. I have a music track that does go throughout the entire duration of the timeline. And then early on here, I have some typing keyboard sound effects. So let's just play through a section here where we have all this overlaid audio and take a listen. So we want to get mixing. We want to first prioritize our vocals, bring those up, compress them, EQ them, get them sounding sweet. Then we'll build the rest around that. If we go in to the multicam clip and work on the vocal channel, we are doing so without the context of the rest of the audio. And because of that key concept that we can hear multiple sources at the same time, it's going to be mostly in vain because you'll perform a bunch of work in here, get the audio sounding good, and then you'll hear it back in the main timeline in relation to the rest of the audio and you'll just have to go make more adjustments. And now you've kind of set up everything within the timeline, the multicam clip timeline, you're gonna have to go in and kind of guess the changes to parameters need, come back out and hear it again against the rest of the audio. And you're going to have to do this really annoying back and forth tedious process. So by staying out of the multicam clip and performing all of this, within your main timeline, you're always going to be able to hear what you need to hear to make those informed decisions. I think working from home is a major positive. Um, you don't have that commute, so you might be saving an hour every day, you might be saving two hours. Uh, it's just those little things make a difference. Having lunch at home is nice, you can go for a walk. I find myself a lot more productive. I'm not getting distracted chatting to people all the time. And it, and it gives me that freedom. If I wanted to work from Dublin and stay with my family for a week, I can. That's a major positive, that freedom, that flexibility. I think those are some of the major positives that I've kind of seen and found. So it's, it's nice to see the silver linings that, that have occurred during this kind of dark time. <laughs> Lastly, before we wrap up, as promised, I want to cover how to handle a multicam clip that has an audio track that has multiple voices recorded to multiple channels embedded within that single track. In other words, how do we break that track out to multiple tracks so that we get independent control over each voice? I'm gonna cover two techniques that will cover two of the most likely scenarios you are to encounter with this problem. So let's jump back into the software one last time and have a look. So in this first example, this is the scenario we're gonna pretend we're dealing with. We have three cameras and we're pretending that we had three individuals to record. So each individual is getting one camera on them. Each individual is mic'd up and each microphone is going to their respective camera. So each camera in my tracks here had one individual's voice going through it. So that's great. In my multicam clip timeline, each person's voice is on an independent channel and I could address each of them separately. 
but we don't want to do that within the multicam clip for the reasons already outlined in this tutorial. We want to do this in our main timeline for the maximum flexibility. Here's how I would go about addressing this scenario. Come back out to your main timeline and what you want to do is right click over here at the timeline tracks and we'll add two extra audio tracks and we'll have those go below audio one. Next, I will select all of the audio clips and what I'll do is alt drag them straight down so that they're still in sync and I'll do this twice over. Then I'll grab everything on that second vocal track and I'll hit alt two to change all those clips over to the B camera where our second subject's voice will live. And then I'll do the same for that third track but I'll switch this over to the C camera where the third person's vocals will live. I've now broken out those camera angles, audio tracks, and those three different hypothetical voices respectively. And I now have them all in separate tracks that I can attack with different amounts of EQ, compression, normalization, noise reduction, whatever it is I need. The next most likely scenario you're going to find yourself facing is trying to break out a clip or a track that has multiple channels actually embedded to it. So say for example, you're working with a multicam clip and the audio was recorded externally to something like a Zoom F8 that has like eight audio channels and eight different voices were recorded to each channel. But all those channels by default will just be shoved onto the one track in DaVinci Resolve. How do I break out that one track with eight channels to be eight individual tracks? Well, in my example here, again, we're going to have to use our imagination a bit, but my second track here with my FS5 footage, that FS5 has two channels embedded to it that we could break out and split up and work with independently. So the first thing, and it's not essential, but this is just confirming things for you, is you want to select one of those clips or all of those clips and right click and display individual channels. And this will show you how many channels you actually have. In my case, two, this could be four, it could be eight, depending on what the audio source is. Now that you've confirmed that there is indeed multiple channels within this track, what you'll do is right click on that track and you can convert these to a linked group. And you can see in my case, this is breaking it out into two tracks with those channels now split out across them for me to attack completely independently. But as I said, if you're working with four or eight channels embedded in that one clip, this could break it out into those four or eight tracks, all with one voice per track ready for you to do independent editing too. As always, I hope you found this tutorial helpful and if you did, please do consider giving the video a thumbs up as well as subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell. Have a good one and I hope to see you in the next video. We came to